This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. and welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And on this day, December 13th, 1996, Toronto Blue Jay fans got a gigantic present as one of the best free agent pitchers came to the Blue Jays. I know Jack Morris in 92 when he came to the Blue Jays was huge, coming off the World Series title with the Twins. But this was just as good as Roger Clemens made his mark, signed with the Blue Jays out of free agency. Now, Clemens was a great Red Sox pitcher. He started his career in 1984 with the Red Sox, and then two years later, in 86, he had a season for the ages. 24-4, and being named the MVP and Cy Young winner, and also having I mean, that 20 strikeout game against Seattle in April 1986 set the record for most strikeouts in one game. And he actually started off, what, 14-0 and zero at one point, and the Blue Jays were the first team to beat him, I think. But anyhow, Clemens was a Boston icon. Yeah, there's questions if Clemens did want out of Game 6 of the World Series. According to, you know, John McInerra, he said that Clemens asked to come out, but I doubt that highly. Because Clemens, even though he had a blister thing, it affected one pitch that wasn't really that big. It wasn't his fastball. Regardless of that, Clemens did well for Boston. He pitched well in the 1980s. In 1990, he looked pretty good. He looked poised to win the Cy Young Award because he had a 1.93 ERA and 209 strikeouts. But strangely, they gave it to 27 win Bob Walsh. And it was like shocking. Clemens in 1991 was 18 and 10 with a 262 ERA and 241 strikeouts, so he basically did well. Of course, Clemens did miss some time in the 91 season to start with, not just with injuries, but the fact that he was suspended for his bumping into the umpire during the ALCS in 1990. Regardless, Clemens was pretty good for Boston. And Boston was struggling a little bit, but they won the 95 division, and Clemens pitched well. In 96, at Tiger Stadium, he struck out 20 Tigers to tie his major league mark. That would be his third to last and actually last win in Red Sox history, strange enough. Anyway, Clemens had 257 strikeouts, and it looked good for Boston, like he was a good strikeout pitcher. Anyway, the Red Sox did offer him the most money ever offered to a player in the history of the Red Sox franchise. Dan Duquette had said that he had hoped to keep him in Boston during the twilight of his career. So regardless of what happened, Clemens might have had some issues with Duquette and the Boston organization. He practically... You know, he was a free agent. He had 192 wins and 38 shutouts. Actually tied, legitimately tied for the Red Sox lead in both categories with Cy Young. And has 2,590 strikeouts, the most in Red Sox history, beating Cy Young. Clemens did not really have much of a postseason happiness. He was 1-2 and two lifetime. And the fact that no Red Sox ever were 21 in Boston after Clemens left in 96. It was just amazing. Somehow, the Red Sox organization didn't take good care of Clemens, personally. And despite the money, Clemens decided to follow his heart and sign with the Blue Jays. Now, a lot of people would be thinking, why Toronto? Like, I mean, he did sign a four-year, $40 million deal with the Jays in 96, but I think the Red Sox offered him more money, didn't they? I don't remember. But regardless of that, it was just amazing how Clemens would be so good and how the Blue Jays would attract Roger Clemens. After all, the Blue Jays did have the Cy Young winner, Pat Hankin. Now, of course, it was a little controversial because some say Andy Pettit deserved it in 96. And actually, look at the numbers. Pettit did deserve it, in a sense. But it was nice to see that Pat Hankin, the defending Cy Young champion, and the two-time winner of the AL Cy Young, the new, well, Roger Clemens, would sign with the Blue Jays. It gave Toronto a great starting rotation to help him in 97, which would be the first year that the Blue Jays would go away from their 70s style jerseys and wear the awkward um, 
blue jay head on a baseball within the canadian within a canadian maple leaf it was kind of awkward to see the blue jays changing outfits and all that of course that's the design you see on the screen if you're watching the video of it but the fact of the matter was that Clemens was coming to Toronto and it was like huge because Boston and Toronto were giant AL East rivals and you know at least it wasn't the Yankees so anyway the Blue Jays were hot on him and Clemens did decent to start the, two, the 97 season in his first game back in June of 1997 to Fenway Park he pitched eight solid innings, giving up only four hits and a one run with 16 strikeouts. And everybody on the Red Sox lineup who faced him struck out at least once. So basically, Clemens got his revenge on the Red Sox for dumping him off. The Red Sox did have a few good years well, with Pedro kind of being the de facto replacement for Clemens. But anyway, few would imagine that Clemens would not last the four-year contract with the Blue Jays. He would actually have a... He would only spend two years with the Blue Jays. The 97 season was huge. He won 21 games with a 205 ERA, 292 strikeouts. Winning the pitching triple crown, meaning that he led the American League in wins, ERA, and strikeouts. And in 98, he did it again. 20 wins with a 265 ERA and 271 strikeouts. But the fact of the matter is Clemens led the AL in those marks. But after the 98 season, despite the Blue Jays winning 88 games and actually being a little competitive in the AL East, more so than they, they were before, well, since 93, Clemens asked to be traded because he didn't think Toronto had the winning pedigree. And he was dedicated to winning a championship because he had no World Series titles. So the Blue Jays obliged and traded him to the Yankees for David Wells, Homer Bush, and Graham Lloyd. Bush and Lloyd would do decent in Blue Jay colors. David Wells former Blue Jay would actually do quite well winning 20 games for the Blue Jays but the fact of the matter is David Wells wasn't perfect. And the Yankees training anyway, the guy who had a perfect game for the Yankees in 98 was kind of weird. But anyway Clemens would go to the Yankees for five year, five seasons and then go to Houston for three before heading back to the Yankees for the 2007 season. It was like weird. Clemens would never come back to Boston. I guess there was bad blood and he burned some bridges. Of course, Toronto is where Clemens met that stupid trainer by the name of Brian McNamee. And I think I pronounced his name correctly. Perfectly. McNamee. Yeah, he was an athletic trainer and he was the one who was accused of giving st the steroids that Clemens was accused of using while he was pitching with the Blue Jays. I can't remember what year. I think it was 15 in 2000 when at a thrift shop there was a Roger Clemens Toronto Blue Jays t-shirt for like five bucks and it fit me. And for years I had that Roger Clemens t-shirt and would always want to wear it to the Blue Jay games when I went down to the Roger Center in the early 2000s. I would make it a point to wear my Roger Clemens t-shirt. I would never tell them I got it at a secondhand store but yeah, Roger Clemens was Huge. I had Clemens in high regard. Two Cy Youngs in two years with the Blue Jays, I still had him in high regard, despite him asking for a trade, in a sense. But lo and behold, when the steroids happened, I got rid of that t-shirt. I was ashamed and all that. But yeah, you know, Clemens is going to probably get his just desserts and not make the Hall of Fame and all that. But, you know, you still can't contain your excitement that Clemens did well for the Red Sox. I think if he did, wasn't on the juice, I think he definitely is a Hall of Famer. But with him being on the juice, you know, his career's tainted like Barry Bonds and Jason Giambi, among others. So, well, you know, he gave the Blue Jays a few good years, despite the fact that the Blue Jays were in the toughest division with the Red Sox and Yankees just pounding out one-two finishes throughout the land, and Toronto just couldn't pick up the pieces and all that. So, Dems the brakes. Anyhow, I'm Jeff Diamond Adu.